Thank you very much, Ms. Cogan. It, it has indeed given us uh, terrific uh, insight, and I appreciate it. Mr. Harvey. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Ensign, and members of the Senate Subcommittee on Communications, Technology, and the Internet. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to appear before you today. I'm honored to have this opportunity to testify, and I'm here on behalf of the National Association of the Deaf and the Coalition of Organizations for Accessible Technology. Like many consumers, I'm a big fan of technology. Technology empowers me to access the information I need to be successful. Unfortunately, all too often, I and other people like me have been left behind as technology has advanced. Like the Americans with Disabilities Act did 20 years ago, the Equal Access to 21st Century Communications Act, S3304, is a major step forward towards ensuring equal access and equal opportunity for people with disabilities. Today, I will address the provisions that concern access to video programming by people who are deaf or hard of hearing. For example, back in the 1980s, our family paid $200 for a caption decoder box. When the decoder box got too hot, the captions would flicker, making them impossible to read. I remember my stepmom would not let me watch TV an hour before all my children started, just so the decoder box would be cool enough for her favorite program. <laughs> huh. Finally, Congress passed a law to require all TVs with screens larger than 13 inches to have decoder chips to display closed captions. That was a great law. But times and technology have changed. Now my friends can watch their favorite shows on wireless TVs, MP3s, and other devices. Hardly any of these smaller devices display closed captions. Once again, I and others who are deaf or hard of hearing are left out of this whirlwind of technological change. So we are coming back to you 17 years after the Decoder Act was passed. The limitation of the 13-inch screens has worn out its welcome. Now all devices that receive or display video programming should be required to display captions. We also need to make sure that we can actually figure out how to turn on the captions. Under the FCC rules, I am supposed to be able to control the font, size, and color of closed captions. But the new digital TVs and set-top boxes are so complicated to use that few people have figured out how to access these features. S3304 will fix this. It will enable viewers to control captioning features on the top tier of the on-screen menu. It will also require video devices with remote control to have a caption button. Caption control to us is what volume control is to you. This brings me to my final concern. We also need to make sure that the programs received by those devices actually contain captions. As of now, only a handful of TV shows on the internet have captions. This is true even for programs that had captions when they were shown on TV. I remember not having access to many regular TV programs, like when South Park first came out. Everyone said it had inappropriate language. Naturally, this made me want to see the show even more. But the show wasn't captioned, and I could not lip-read the itty-bitty mouths of the cartoon characters. <laughs> As a young adult, keeping up with the cultural experiences of my peers was very important. Whenever access was denied to me, I felt and was left behind. In 1996, thanks to your work, Congress fixed all this by passing a new law requiring nearly all TVs to have captions. This had a huge impact on me. Captions allow me to be in touch with what is going on in the world. But now that everything is moving to the internet, I am again falling behind, just like generations of my family before me. Imagine, if you will, hearing the collective groans of millions of people who are deaf or hard of hearing expressing their frustration as they see history repeating itself all over again. In conclusion, on behalf of millions of people who are deaf and hard of hearing, I urge Congress not to leave us behind as new internet and digital video programming technologies become available to the general public. I ask you to pass legislation that will continue protecting our ability to access these emerging video technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Terrific testimony. We appreciate it. 